This report, uh, give us the context for it. Um, uh, third time that we've run a, a global report like this. Um, first time, though, that South Africa has been included. Surveyed some 5,000 people. Um, just to figure out, uh, the first one is about people asking what's in our food and the second one was about waste and the third one is more about nutritional value um, and uh, the, the concern with uh, global obesity uh, and now certainly that uh, you know with a billion people around the world being obese and, and by 2015 some 1.5 billion people they say are people overweight so there's a big concern out there and, and now what is industry and what are we going to do about that? Well we kind of know this we've been told for a long time too many people eat too much mm -hmm. and too much of the wrong things and obesity is a problem certainly so let's drill down a little bit into this report and what are some of the findings that, that can now be used to do things? So, um, and I'll keep it in the bigger numbers, some, mm. some two-thirds of people say that uh, they um, would like a healthier option if it was available on a menu. Um, we know the statistics already, so therefore if we start looking at in menus particularly and how they are designed, people would like to have that healthier option. The concern is though is usually it either doesn't taste good and tastes like cardboard or the portions aren't big enough or it is too expensive for that special requirement. And so the research says that uh, as restaurant operators, hoteliers and people in the food service organization need to do something about that. Give people a healthier choice, make it as, as affordable and make it sound tasty. So hence we talk about seductive nutrition. Yeah, isn't one of the part of the problem that it's a reluctant provision by restaurateurs, hoteliers, you know, that they themselves perhaps don't really believe in it. So it's a bit like the vegetarian option at a steakhouse, you know. We have yeah. to offer it, but we of don't course. believe in it. Of course. Well, there's that. And then there's also the risk of, what if I redesign my menu to include all of this? In the meantime, when people go out, they want to treat. Mm -hmm. So do I, do I want to eat something healthy if I want to treat? So the findings are more about we'd like a healthier option, slightly healthier, that I can go out, have a starter and a main or a main and a dessert, and still feel as though I've had a decent mm -hmm. evening out and not feel completely uh, uh, bloated afterwards. Well, you mean, I mean, the dietitians sometimes say the way that you stay on your eating plan is once a week you can break out, and maybe that's when you go <laughs> to the restaurant, you eat all those chips. Yeah. What you eat and portion size, I mean, there's a cultural thing there mm. about uh, how much people eat yes. uh, as opposed to necessarily what the food is. So the, the research also shows us that there are examples of uh, smarter ways in which we can do this and help people achieve it. For an example, the, the traditional fish and chips. Um, if you look at a 150 gram portion of uh, chips, if you reduce that by 25 grams and add 75 grams of peas, for example, then you're saving about 25 calories in that mm. meal. Mm. Now you still get the same feel full feeling mm. um, but you are over a period of time as long as you're cautious and careful just by reducing little bits at a time you prevent if you're overweight moving into obesity so what about uh, the kinds of food now sugar particularly mm. sugar increasingly is being uh, condemned as uh, not just not too much of it but you shouldn't have it at all mm. in some cases um, what Findings like this can be delicate because you can actually have a whole industry like the sugar industry which uh, admittedly has another option for ethanol production for fuel. Yeah. But you could actually have, as tobacco used to be, acceptable yeah. and becoming totally unacceptable. Are we going to see sugar become totally unacceptable? Uh, look, I think particularly now with the Consumer Protection Act, what is in your food and, and labelling exactly what's, what goes into it uh, is more and more of a trend so that people at least have the choice. Um, I don't know if that is going to be regulated that much, but certainly, um, you know, that the we keep on referring to those things as uh, too much of a good yeah. thing is going to be bad for you. So it needs to be in. What's in the business uh, implication going to be? Your company is a, is a, a famous brand company, lots mm. of uh, brands, and mm. the way you package foods has to be responsible. Do you use this to affect the way you do business, and, and how is it going to affect the food sector and the retail sector? Okay, so certainly it affects us. We help a restaurant chain, for example, in redraft their menus. We will measure them over a six-month period, so we've got a case study on the go at the moment, and see what happens with, do they increase their footfall, do they increase the restaurant's profitability, because he's still got to stay in business. Mm -hmm. And if that works, using utilizing some of our products, and a lot of our range, we've taken salt out, and we've improved the, the quality of those uh, of the products that we sell. And that helps an operator say, I can be profitable, I can get more feet through the door, and we've done our bit towards helping uh, people become a little more health conscious and having a better choice. Mm. What about South Africa? and Africa. Particular patterns here? Much the same. Uh, as we go further through Africa, uh, the staples of uh, starch and meat are there uh, to try and encourage people to move more towards a healthier option and adding some greens and vegetables. Not having fried but going for baked uh, kind of foods is, is certainly is a trend that we're working hard on to, to encourage operators to do that. So what happens next with this report? Does it change behavior? 
We, we want to encourage that. It's great to have a report, but it's up to us as industry to help people start changing that behavior. And we'll do that with an example, like we say, of this restaurant chain that we're dealing with. And if it works, then we will advertise that loudly and help other people to, to have those opportunities. Yeah. Thanks, Ilka. That was Ilka Kaminga, Vice President of Unilever Food Solutions, South Africa, the Middle East and Pakistan.